Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Moni Lennon, and I'm presenting uh, reasoning with neural tensor networks for knowledge based computation. This paper uh, is published in uh, 2013 in MIPS. Uh, the author is uh, one of the pioneers of uh, this NLP, and uh, the publication has gotten 266 citations. Uh, first of all, what is knowledge-based computation? Knowledge-based computation or link prediction uh, is uh, inf uh, inferring uh, new facts, new true facts, uh, using the knowledge that we have, existing knowledge and facts that we have in our knowledge base. Uh, for example, here in this uh, picture, we know that from the knowledge base, we know that the tiger has tail and we also know that tiger is type of cat. But we don't know whether cat has also tail or not. So, uh, similarly, we know that dog has leg and leg is uh, type of name. But we don't know, we don't have this fact in our knowledge base that uh, dog uh, has limb parts. And those kind of uh, relations and links. Why it is important? Knowledge base, uh, knowledge bases are also uh, very important for question answering and uh, other tasks uh, in text, text mining like uh, um, named entity recognition. Uh, and the, uh, what is the problem with knowledge bases? They are uh, often incomplete and uh, lack of ability to reason over uh, their discrete, dis discrete entities and relationships. We have. Uh, some reasoning uh, approaches, but they are not that much powerful. So the goal of this study is uh, knowledge-based comp uh, completion. It means that we have two entities. Uh, we want to see whether uh, there is a, a R relationship R among them or not. For example, uh, we, know, uh, we want to see whether E1 has relationship uh, uh, R with E2 or not. Uh, for example, Bengal uh, tiger has uh, tail or not, and which, uh, with what serpent? What is the shortcoming of previous work? Uh, most of the previous work uh, use, uh, use uh, atomic representation for uh, knowledge base. It means that, for example, they use RDF and triplet uh, using the names. Or, uh, those that use the uh, vector representation, they use single entity vector representation. It means that for each entity, they use one uh, vector. But we know that the performance can be improved if we can somehow, for example, average the constituting words of uh, uh, the entities based on the components that they have. For example, if we have uh, one vector for Sumatran, tiger and another for Bengal tiger without any relationship among them, then we cannot, uh, we will lose uh, some of the facts that we can capture. Um, another uh, problem with the existing uh, knowledge-based compilation works are that uh, they are using patterns or classifiers that apply to an extra uh, large uh, extra large corpora to compile the knowledge base uh, that they have. Uh, for example, and we know that all the common knowledge is not in the text. So we want to be able to use the uh, facts that we have in knowledge base to complete the knowledge base itself. Uh, for example, one of the very um, famous uh, questions that uh, deep learning questioning and uh, question answering systems cannot uh, solve is, uh, for example, uh, how many legs uh, military has. It is because we don't have, maybe we don't have, for example, this knowledge in the extra text that we have. So we, we want to use the analogy that we have in the knowledge base to use and complete the knowledge base itself. Uh, what is the contribution of this study? Uh, um, the authors uh, propose a new uh, neural tensor network uh, 
uh, to provide a more powerful way for uh, completing the knowledge base. Other than that, they also uh, propose a new uh, vector representation uh, for uh, components of the knowledge base. And they also <coughs> apply a different uh, vectors to, uh, that is written on uh, large unlabeled text to, to see the improvement of the performance. Uh, what is neural tensor network? Uh, neural tensor network is uh, mm, uh, replacing the uh, standard linear neural network uh, layer that we have with the tensor neural network. What is tensor? Tensor is a multi-dimensional matrix. Uh, so using the tensors, we want to uh, mm, compute the likelihood of uh, being two entities in a certain relationship. For example, here in the picture, we have a vector for cat and also vector for a tail. We want to have a representation for relationship among them through the neural tensor. And using this neural tensor network, we want to see what is the confidence for this triplet. It means that how, uh, how did, uh, what level of certainty we can say that these two, uh, uh, these two entities has this relationship. Uh, this is the approach that they use. Um, from, I'll try to uh, explain it uh, intuitively. Um, they use uh, tensor layer. It means that each uh, layer, instead of using the matrix that is two-dimensional, we are using three-dimensional tensor. And the mm -hmm. third dimension of the tensor is the um, possible relations that we have among the entities that we have. What do you mean three-dimensional tensor? Is it, is it a cube? Uh, yes. Okay. yes. And the third dimension is um, relation. So each a slice is a, another uh, is a matrix, and each a slice uh, is a representation of a relation that we have among the two entities. For example, here the blue, yeah, the blue, the blue vector here is uh, entity one. For example, cat. Uh, this a slide is the first relation that we can have among cat. And the second entity, for example, tail. We may so have another relation. This is very sparse, right? Uh, this is uh, the base in the neural network. No, uh, it wouldn't be uh, as sparse. At the end, we will learn uh, with uh, what we will uh, fill this uh, matrix. So it is a statistical. Right, but uh, the chart, you know, the. E e if this, is this, is this a matrix representing what is in the data? Um, if it is, then the... And actually, know. that's a problem of uh, using tensor model because it's quite as sparse for the knowledge base. Hmm. Okay, so if uh, it's filled with probabilities, then it's not sparse, right? No, it's, it's not. It should have a, a, a value there. Hmm. Uh, so the value there is, uh, is uh, you know, informed. Most of them would be zero, though, right? Yeah, but that's still, it's still a probability. There. Right? It's going to be there anyway. So, so it's a problem. Yeah, it's, it's like a missing, yeah. it's not a missing information. It's there. That I, I know that there is no relationship between this and that. Yeah. That's why I have zero problem. <coughs> mm, but even uh, it is more complex. <coughs> I should see the matrix. I cannot say that it is false without going to and see the matrix because most of the time what we have in the mm, neural network, mm, the weights, we try to have a very uh, a slight difference in the weights. So they are not zero. They are not uh, in the sense that we have a sparse matrix. And we try to not allow them to become very large. But I have not uh, trained this neural network, so I don't know exactly. <coughs> what the amount would be. 
For example, here the number of slides is two. So it means that um, between two entities, we have considered uh, that we may have two relations. And we have another standard layer of neural network and concatenation of the two entities that we have, bias, and uh, F is the nonlinearity that we have uh, in the neural network. Here, F is tangent, hyper tangent hyperbolic and uh, the linear line. Uh, if we go through the dimension, we will see that at the end, we will have one number. This number, uh, because we have one by car here, the result here would be uh, car by one plus car by one plus car by one by one. So we will have one by one number that is uh, the probability of these two entities to be in that kind of relation. Uh, what is the intuition behind this approach? Uh, why they use, for example, neural tensor network instead of a standard neural network? Uh, because they want to uh, allow the two entities to have enough interaction. For example, here, two entities has uh, interaction to a multiplication by a, uh, a slice of a tensor. Uh, because they assume that using more uh, interaction, they can uh, they, they can get a better result, and in the result, they also show that this assumption is true. There are some related models of uh, our special case of the neural tensor uh, network, or they, they, they have helped the author to come up with the, this idea. For example, the distance model, that is like a Euclidean distance, uh, we will not have no, uh, any interaction among the entities using the Euclidean distance or single layer uh, neural network, network model that uh, we have weak interaction because we will only uh, interact the vector of entities and then apply a non-linearity that we have. Uh, other mo uh, model, model uh, that is uh, entry-wise multiplication, again, uh, here the problem is that almost all parameters shared uh, by all the relations. It means that, for example, here we had for each uh, possible relation, we had one slice of a tensor. Here, two tensors. But in that model, um, it, it, it is like only learning one relation. And one uh, bilinear model uh, that has a higher, um, higher interaction in, uh, between the mol uh, entities, but, but it is like uh, only having uh, that box in the model. So all other um, uh, parameters like V, U, and the bias uh, would be zero. It means that the model would not be that much powerful. So it is a special case of this model. Uh, how to train the network? Uh, we have it uh, as as in instance. We have all the uh, triplet that we have in the knowledge base, and we would generate the corrected one. The corrected one is uh, by replacing the, for example, E2 with uh, another in uh, instances of E2, <coughs> uh, and then we have the objective objective function, this is the minimization problem, so we want to um, minimize the probability of uh, corrected, uh, uh, corrected triplets to be in the model, and uh, like other neural networks, we have gradient, but uh, here the gradient would be based on each slice. So we will go relation by relation uh, for updating rules. And uh, as I mentioned, they have also revisited entity representation. Uh, they have used word vectors uh, instead of entity vectors, and they have also used the pre-trained vectors uh, to capture in the semantic uh, similarity using the context uh, by uh, pre-training vectors on large unlabeled uh, dataset. 
and they also use uh, uh, entity vectors by averaging its word vectors. For example, if we have uh, entity iris apila, then uh, the result would be average of the vectors. Um, the author also has another very uh, complex and complex, uh, com and powerful uh, model, recursive neural network. But uh, why he, he doesn't use uh, recursive neural network here? Because recursive neural network can capture the uh, compositionality very well. But why? Because most of the uh, word that they have in the word net is only one word, and over 90% of them only have two words. So it means that uh, we don't need that much powerful, yeah algorithm to deal with that. And another problem is that uh, even, for example, in the free base that they have many two-port uh, entities, uh, there isn't any semantic relation between the two parts of one entity. For example, when we have uh, first name and family, then uh, there isn't any point to use uh, a very complex approach to dealing with compositionality. For experiments, they have used two knowledge bases, BoardNet and FreeBase, uh, and with some restrictions. For example, for uh, FreeBase, they have used uh, only the person's name with some other uh, restrictions. Another uh, interesting point in this paper was uh, filtering trivial test tests. So they deliberately has uh, removed some of uh, very trivial and easy uh, use cases, uh, cases in the test set to uh, have a concrete result, and also very difficult relations. The relations that doesn't make sense to infer about them. For example, place of death. How we can infer place of death of someone? We can guess, for example, from the uh, address, but we cannot infer uh, a we cannot infer a place of death of uh, someone, for example, using the inference web. And uh, here is the data set. They have uh, 11 unique uh, instances of relations, entities, and they also have development set because in that uh, formula, the G, uh, we had the problem, probability. What is the threshold of probability for some relation? Uh, to be accepted and uh, be added to the knowledge base that we have. And the models uh, that I discussed about them and the result for, for Mula Tensor Network uh, is the best. And here is the sample of some results. For example, they have the entity event uh, tube. They have fixed the type of relation for that. And using that uh, formula, G in the neural tensor network, uh, they have found the G for all the other entities, and then they have ranked them uh, based on the, uh, in the decreasing order. And also in the free base, for example, we know that uh, a profession of uh, someone is historian, and place of birth is fellow. What uh, the system uh, could infer is the gender that is male. How it can uh, infer the gender? Intuitively, it should use, for example, uh, from another entity that we have, from what's uh, crazy. And we know the gender is male. Here, it will guess. And the nationality. What is, what is the data on which this is extracted from? Philippines. Uh, so they are, they are identifying relationships that, that was not in freebase, or they are? Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. they're making prediction inference, mm. but completely statistical, but using the logic. Uh, so uh, you said they capture the semantic information. So mm. did they explain uh, semantic information from this example, or uh, what kind of uh, semantic information they capture? Uh, for example, here, we know that uh, Francois is historian and place of birth is Florence. 
but we didn't know gender and also nationality. It can capture that the gender is male and nationality is Italian. Um, what is behind that? Maybe because we have front row with gender, so this is a black box. But we can intuitively explain that. Maybe it is because of that that it can explain. Uh, it can capture the gender of brown sure, and also the nationality, Italy, because the Florence is the uh, so it's city. So semantic relatedness, right, between Florence and Italy. So that's that semantic. Yeah, yeah, all the relations are the semantic relatedness. So the, and the point is that they're doing this using the probabilistic model rather than uh, logic uh, based inference. Yes. Using I mean, I've been hearing about tensor for a long time, but they don't seem to be that popular. What is what is happening? Tensor. It's a flow is based on tensor. Right? He, all the yeah, deep learning yeah. approaches use is tensor. Tensor? Uh, tensor is nothing other than a matrix with more than two dimensions. A cube. Cube. Yeah, or even more than. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More than a few? Yeah. yeah. It can have <coughs> any dimension that oh, it is. But uh, you can imagine. But here it mm. only makes sense to have three dimensions. So it's all the matrix theory that we used to learn in college? We used to do matrix theory in college. Like singular value and this kind of stuff? Mm? Singular value decomposition and this kind of stuff? Or what? Eigenvectors and every other matrix stuff. Yeah. Yeah, all the yeah. Yeah. And this was but actually mathematically it's a bit uh, like difficult, and that's why with recursive uh, tensor they get better result with uh, LSTM and convolutional neural network. Maybe that's the reason that you are mentioned that it's not that much famous. Uh, in all, in all matrix maybe based on my experience. Maybe 90% of neural network, new neural networks that we have, we use tensor. Mm. Because the weights are not in a two-dimensional matrix. But uh, this one is a neural tensor network, is another yeah. But I think yeah. if you're talking about a triple, it should be a cube, right? A tensor. Yeah. Yeah, here is here. Yeah. So because for each relation because you want to have exactly. one dimension. Yeah. Right? Yeah. One dimension for each relation. Yeah. yeah. Two dimension for each relation. Yeah. Yeah. One matrix for each relation. One instance and then the, the relation. relation between them. Yeah, it means yeah. it is like having many slides of yeah. matrix. That is full of weights. Yeah. And it would be learned automatically. I don't know. I'm sure that it is not this much. I don't know exactly what it is. But you have some probabilities. And then, as you said, using the threshold, you accept all the judgment. Yeah. yeah, but always we cannot interpret the weights in the Based on mm -hmm. Only we can interpret the results. For example, here yeah. we know that we got a good result yeah. based on the. Maybe also uh, like fine tuning these parameters, these, this threshold and then observing what are the outputs of such relations. Yeah, for that they have uh, developing development <coughs> separately.